Today, we're going to look at the behaviors of graphs, how graphs increase and decrease. That is, they go up and down. We'll look for maximums and minimums and decide if they're relative or absolute. And finally, we'll discover that some graphs are called even or odd, and that's simply because they have a certain type of symmetry. Look at this graph that I've created here. Um, it's kind of a, a special graph. It seems to go up and down. There's even a space in the middle there where it appears to be flat. I want to look at some points along this graph with you. If you look here on the left-hand side, we can see that there's points that are each associated with these x values, x sub 1, would have a y value that we could call f of x sub 1. This other point we could say uh, is x sub 2, and it has a y value of f of x sub 2. Whenever I use this function notation, remember that that always refers to the y value. Now we have a simple conclusion in this interval, and that is that the Y, the second y value is actually greater than the first. Now, when this happens, we would say that the function is increasing. That is, that it is going up in that interval. And that is simply because the second y value is greater than the first. Now, that is actually happening everywhere in this interval, and you would be able to denote that interval as negative infinity all the way to a. And again, every y value in that interval is greater than the first. By the way, that's actually happening over here between c and d. And so that would be another space, another interval where this function is increasing. Let's look at another set of points. Specifically over here on the right, we have a point that goes with x, x sub 4. We call that f of x sub 4. Again, that would be the y value. And this point that goes with x sub 3, we could say it has a y value of f of x sub 3. Now, do you see what I'm going to say here? If you look at the second y value, there's a simple conclusion, and that is that it's less than. Now, when the second y value is less than the first y value, we would be able to simply conclude that the function is decreasing. That is, that it's going down. And that happens every time that the second y value is less than the first y value. Now that's happening everywhere in this interval, everywhere from d to infinity. We see that the function is decreasing. And by the way, that's also happening over here uh, between a and b, which can be another interval where the function is decreasing. Now, there's one more space that we want to look at. It's this space in the middle where we have a different observation about the y values. Now remember, the y value that goes with x sub 5 we call f of x sub 5. And the y value that goes with f of, that goes with x sub 6 we could call f of x sub 6. Well, do you see what's true about these y values? Yes, indeed, they are equal. And when y values are equal on an interval, we actually would say that the function is constant. It is constant, actually, everywhere between b and c. And that is simply because, again, the y values are equal. Now, this function also has some special points. The points where these uh, intervals are changing. And uh, we would focus on these points and be able to describe them as maximums and minimums. If you just look with me here at point uh, A, you should conclude that point A is a high point on the graph. And so point A is a maximum. But so is point D, right? Point D is a maximum. It's a high point on a graph. There's something to say here, though, that one of these points is absolutely the highest point. And, of course, point D would get that classification. It's absolutely the highest point on the graph. Where point A is just a relative maximum. That means that in its neighborhood, it's a high point. But as we look around, we see point D being actually higher. Now, points A and B, what are they? Excuse me, B and C, what are they? Well, B and C would be low points on the graph. And so we could say that B and C 
are minimums. But again, they're not absolutely the lowest point in the graph because we can see that the graph actually goes lower as it travels down to negative infinity. So B and C would also be relative minimums. Maximums and minimums are special points on a graph. A relative maximum minimum, excuse me, a relative maximum, it's just going to be the highest point in some interval. A relative minimum, the lowest point in some interval. Now, if there's a point that's absolutely higher, then that would get the classification of being the absolute max or min, which again is the highest point on the graph. What can we do with this? Well, bottom line is I'm going to give you an equation or a graph, and you're going to classify for some of these uh, places. And what I find is that the hardest thing for students is just understanding how to say it. I think that most of us can see that when you look at this graph that it's going up and down, it's just being able to say it. Now, when a graph goes up, it means that the second y value is greater than the first y value. When a graph goes up, it is increasing. So both of these yellow spots are intervals of increasing. But we always want to give the answer using the x value. You see, the x value is kind of like the address. And so for this first interval, negative infinity all the way to negative 1 would be when it is increasing. Negative infinity to negative 1. In the second interval, the x value of 1 to the x value of infinity would be how we can describe that address. So notice that we always use the x value to give the interval of increasing. And it's going to be the same thing for the interval of decreasing, where the second y value is less than the first y value. We say that the graph is decreasing. And again, we just want to say it correctly. So we use the x value. The x value is negative 1 to the x value of 1. Now when I write these numbers with parentheses and comma, I'm not talking about the point negative 1, 1. This is not the point negative 1, 1. But rather, this is the interval. This is the interval negative 1 to 1. What about maximums and minimums? Well, again, if you look at this graph, I think it's pretty clear that there's a high point. Um, it is definitely negative 1, comma 2. So we would call that a maximum. Um, but it's not the highest point. And the reason it's not the highest point is because the graph keeps going up to infinity. So we would call this a relative maximum. And then over here we have a, a low point, 1, negative 2. But it's not the lowest point because the graph keeps going down to negative infinity. So we call that a relative minimum. All right, so we've analyzed the behavior of that graph. What if I give you an equation? How are you going to decide its behavior? Well, the simple answer is you're going to need to graph it. So why don't you fire up Desmos. Make sure you have that available because you're going to use it for some other things today also. Fire up Desmos. And let's graph negative x squared plus 4. Okay, it looks like a upside down parabola. Now, you got to be careful when you look at this parabola because sometimes students will say that the graph is decreasing always because they kind of see those arrows at the bottom. That, in fact, is not true because, remember, if the second y value is greater than the first y value, in this case, we would say that the graph is actually increasing in this interval. Now, remember, you want to be able to say it correctly. You want to be able to give the x value. And once again, students sometimes see the wrong numbers, like they see this number 5. But that's actually not the x value that you want to see. You want to see the x value of 0. So we would say that the graph is increasing from negative infinity, that would be the x value right here, all the way to 0. Now the graph is also decreasing. It's decreasing as it goes down. That's because the y values get smaller. And again, we want to give that answer using x values. Now the x value of 0 to the x value of infinity. Okay, Make sure you realize that I'm using infinity as my second x value 
because that would mean that the graph keeps going to the right. And finally, we clearly have a point up here, 0, 0,5, that's a maximum. It's the absolute maximum. It's the absolute maximum because it's absolutely the highest point. Okay, so we have a simple parabola that is increasing on the left side, but it's decreasing on the right. How about this function? Negative 1 third x cubed plus x squared minus 3. Same thing, I encourage you to graph it on Desmos. Take a look at it. Yep, I want you to graph it on Desmos. Take a look at it. Awkward silence. Okay, you get this interesting looking graph. As you get ready to analyze it, you should be thinking about it if it's going up or down. Uh, it's definitely true that it's going down in this interval. And then it looks like it also goes down over here in this interval. Same thing, you want to be able to describe the address. You want to be able to give the location. And this point right here, again, sometimes students look at that and they see the number 3. But what I want you to do is I want you to look at that and I want you to see the number 0. Because you always give the x value of the interval. Okay, now... The x value of uh, the, the far left x value of this interval is negative infinity. So when we say negative infinity to zero, okay, we're talking about that space, that first interval on the left. And then over here, again, we have another x value. Okay, when you look at that, you want to force yourself to see x equals two. And the other part of that interval would be positive infinity. Again, that would be the x value to the right. So the graph is decreasing from 2 to infinity. This little guy in the middle is where it's increasing. The graph is going up, and we can say that it's going up from 0 to 2. How about maximums and minimums? Okay, We should be able to, uh, to agree that this point right here is a low point. Although it's not the lowest point, it is a low point. So we call it a minimum, specifically a relative minimum. And whenever you give a point, you do give the x and the y value. So we have 0, 3 for the relative minimum. And then we have this maximum here. Again, it's not the highest point, so it's a relative maximum. And we want to give the x and the y value if you click on that using Desmos, you'll see that the y value is not uh, an integer. That's fine. We can just give the decimal about 4.3. Okay. Again, be careful as you describe these intervals that you use x values. Okay. And then, of course, when we give the maximum minimum, we give it as a point. I like this graph. It's kind of interesting. Um, I encourage you to type it into Desmos, but uh, if you just want to look at it with me right now, it's kind of like the Nike swoosh. We've got the quantity x minus 2, and then uh, multiply by the square root of x plus 3. Uh, make sure you can type a square root into Desmos. You can, you can type a square root by activating the uh, keyboard and uh, grabbing that root symbol, and then x plus 3 will be under the square root. There should be some places on this graph that kind of grab your attention. I'm highlighting them with these two points. Um, and uh, uh, again, using Desmos, you can actually find the value of those points. This one's negative 3, 0. And then this point here is about 1.33, negative 4.3. Okay, now when you, when you identify those points, you want to use them carefully as you give your decreasing interval, okay, now it's going to be decreasing from negative 3 to 1.3. Excuse me, that's actually a negative 1.3. So it's decreasing from negative 3 to negative 1.3. And then the graph continues to increase after that point. So we can say it's increasing from negative 1.3 the rest of the way to infinity. 
And notice that again, I'm using X values to describe those intervals. Now, most students, it's easy to see that uh, this point right here is a maximum. Indeed it is, it's a relative maximum. It's not the highest point on the graph, but it is a high point. Um, if you're a little unsure about that, just picture yourself standing at this point. If you're standing here um, and you're looking around, you would notice that uh, as you look, that you're looking down at the graph. And since you're looking down at the graph, that means you're, you're at a high point. That's a maximum. Um, compared to, of course, this point here, where if I was standing at this point, I'd be at a low point. I would be looking up at the graph. That's actually an absolute minimum. Um, because it's absolutely the lowest point on the graph. There's no other point that goes lower. Okay, so we can specifically call it an absolute minimum. All right, well, what else can we, can we do? Um, well, we can try to make you think a little bit uh, about a little more of a, a theory situation. In this case, a situation where we have some uh, unknown position, we'll just call it x equals a, and it looks like it's increasing. It looks like a graph is increasing when we're less than A, but decreasing when you're greater than A. So what's up with A? Is A a minimum or maximum? And what about a sketch? Okay, now this type of problem requires us to do uh, a little bit of a kind of interpretation. Um, and uh, often it's helpful to still visualize that graph uh, so that you can interpret it. Um, let me help you a little bit, especially if you're confused about A. Uh, a can just be any X value. I could certainly put it here. Um, a would have an associated Y value. Um, you know, and since there's a Y value, I can write that as, I can mark that as a point. So if we're increasing when X is less than A, you have to understand that that would mean that you're to the left of A. Can you picture the graph increasing to the left of A? Can you draw it? As I draw this, there's two things you want to conclude. First of all, I am to the left of A. Second of all, the graph is increasing. It is going up. How about the other half of this? How about the part where we're decreasing? Um, where we're decreasing when we're to the right of A. Can you picture the right side of A? Can you picture the graph decreasing? What would it have to look like? Okay, here we're to the right of A, and here we're decreasing. Now what I ended up drawing here was actually very similar to the first example that we did. And it's pretty clear that if you draw it this way, that point A is a maximum. All right, let's talk about one more idea. We're gonna talk about the idea of even and odd. Now, uh, some functions are even, and they're even if they are symmetric with the y-axis. We would also say algebraically that if the point x, y is on that graph, then the point negative x, y would also be on the graph. What does this mean? Well, again, it's, it's a graphing behavior. It's a visual thing. If we look at a graph, how about the graph of y equals x squared minus 3? We see that it has a certain symmetry. And simply, if you focus on the y-axis, if you focus on the y-axis down the middle here, you can see that the graph looks the same on both sides of the y-axis. Hence, it's symmetrical about the y-axis. Also, if you look at some points on this graph, um, there's a lot of points that we have, but I'm going to focus you on the point uh, 3, uh, 6. Um, we would see that there's a symmetrical point. And that symmetrical point would be the point negative 3, 6. Now, simply what this is saying is that if we have a positive x value matching with 6, we're going to have a negative x value this matching with the same 6. And this would be another reason why this graph is even. Now, not all graphs are even. Some graphs are odd. 
Now, if a function is odd, it would be symmetrical with the origin. It would be symmetrical with the origin. And we would also say that if the point x, y is on the graph, then so is the point negative x, negative y. Again, this is a visual thing. How about the function y equals x cubed? Now, the function y equals x cubed is has this particular shape, and it's symmetrical with the origin. Now, to be symmetrical with the origin is a little bit harder to, to see because it actually means that I'm symmetrical with two lines. It means that I'm symmetrical with a horizontal line, and I like to say that if I'm symmetrical with a horizontal line, that the graph would fold down. The graph would fold down. And now the graph is actually kind of in this position, and it is symmetrical with a vertical line. Now, if you're symmetrical with a vertical line, that would mean that the graph would fold over. It would fold it over here. And so it's kind of like a double fold. You would fold it down and you would fold it over. And when both those things happen, we say that the graph is symmetrical with the origin. How about points? Sometimes it's actually easier to see points, um, especially uh, when a graph is odd. Here's the point 2, 8. Well, if the point 2, 8 is on the graph, then we should also be able to conclude that the point 2, negative 8 is on the graph. And, excuse me, negative 2, negative 8 is on the graph. And, in fact, negative 2, negative 8 uh, is here, which would make this function odd. So what can we do with this? Well, I can give you some functions, and we can just decide if they're even or odd. How about the function y equals x cubed minus x? Go ahead and type into Desmos. I want you to see these on your own screen. Um, it's y equals x cubed minus x. Okay, and we get this graph. Sometimes uh, you have to uh, kind of play with the window. You can uh, zoom in, you can uh, grab it a little bit. I just want you to get a good look at your uh, function. Now. Uh, visually, if you look at this function, it appears that it kind of looks the same um, on both sides of what? Well, it would be on both sides of the origin. Now, remember, that means a double fold. So that means I have to fold the graph horizontally. So I fold it like up and down over a horizontal line, and I can fold it sideways over a vertical line. Um, if you do that, you'll see that the two sides of the graph line up. Um, you can also kind of algebraically look at the graph. Now, to do that, you have to find some points on the graph. And sometimes students think that I'm just finding random points, but I'm not. I'm just finding a point that I can see, like maybe the point 0.26. Um, now, the thing is, if the point 0.26 is on the graph, then I need to go in search of another special point, which would be the point negative 2, negative 6. And it looks like that the point negative 2, negative 6 does show up on the graph which gives me confirmation that if I have x, y, then I have negative x, negative y, which would mean that this function is odd. By the way, look at the exponents on this function, x to the third, x to the first. Those exponents are odd. That's actually another reason why this function is an odd function. How about the function y equals the square root of x squared minus 3. y equals the square root of x squared minus 3. Kind of a neat looking function. I encourage you to type it in so you can see it on your screen. Now, if you visually look at this graph, it looks like it kind of has the same shape on both sides of the y-axis. That means it's symmetrical with the y-axis, and that means that it's an even function. We can also do a little bit of analysis of some points. Again, when you're, when you're finding these points, there's a lot of points on the graph. You can really find any point that you want. Um, let's say that I like an x value of 3. I don't know, for some reason I like the number 3. Well, it looks like when x equals 3, that the y value is really close to about 2.4. But you see, if I go over here, now I would have to look for x equals negative 3. Um, well, when I go to x equals negative 3, if I can get there, I see that I have the same y value. I have 2.4, which would be another reason why if I have the point x, y, then I notice I also have the point negative x, y.
another reason why this graph would be even. Now, if you look at the exponents on this function, I see that I do have an even exponent, x to the second, um, but uh, there are no other x's. And so it looks like that I have another kind of argument here that all of the exponents are even. How about the function x squared plus 2x? x squared plus 2x. Okay, now we end up with a parabola, but when we're looking at the symmetry of this parabola, it turns out that it's not symmetrical with the y-axis. It's actually symmetrical uh, with um, a line that goes through the middle of the parabola, but that would not be the y-axis. Also, if you kind of like look for some points along here, um, you know, uh, I don't know what point do you want to find. Maybe the point that goes with 1. So when x equals 1, y equals 3. Well, I, there's nothing special that happens here because when I go to x equals negative 1, I get a y value of negative 1. What I was hoping was that I would get a y value of 3. But of course, that doesn't happen because this function is not symmetrical with the y-axis. Finally, if you look at your exponents, you can see that one of the exponents is 2, but the other exponent on x is 1. We kind of have like a mismatch of exponents, even and odd. You see, this function is neither even or odd. This function has no uh, special classification. We would just say that it's neither. One more function. How about 1 over x? 1 over x, or 1 divided by x. Now, this is a kind of graph that we're going to study more about later in the year, but just for today, we're trying to look at the symmetry of the graph. Now, if you look at the symmetry, you should kind of feel like it looks the same on both sides of, that's correct, of both sides of the origin. If you fold the graph down and then you fold the graph over, you would feel like that the graphs are going to line up, that they're going to be symmetrical. And that's because it's symmetrical with the origin. If you look at some points, again, you can really look at any point that you want, but maybe you like the point 2, a half. That means you would be able to find another point, negative 2. You'd have to go to negative 2, and you would discover that you get negative a half, if I can get to that spot. Okay, and so if I have x, y, which is the point 2, a half, then I notice I have negative x, negative y, which is negative 2, negative a half. Another reason why this function is In conclusion, it's definitely true that most of today's lesson is visual. So make sure that you're graphing your equations and you want to graph them on Desmos.